Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the Caribbean. It is Monday evening, March 13th, 2023. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Also feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what the weather has been like in your ear recently. Also, feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific era. I respond to all comments and I really live for this stuff. Alright, so let us take a look at the significant feature map across the Atlantic for this evening. We can see that we have a cold front right there across portions of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. And we can see that we have another cold front right there stretching all the way from the northern section of the North Atlantic all the way down to the north of the Eastern Caribbean. And if we actually take a look at the visible satellite images before the sun went down, we can see that line of clouds across portions of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico affecting the area with some amount of overcast skies and rainfall. And we can also see the clouds associated with that other cold front stretching all the way from northern section of North Atlantic all the way down to the north of the Eastern Caribbean. We'll be talking more about the rest of the Caribbean's weather later on. Let's focus our attention on what happened across Jamaica for today. So if we actually take a look at the visible satellite images before the sun went down, we can see that we had more of a southeasterly flow of winds and clouds across the island for today. Then we had a buildup of clouds across portions of western and northern Jamaica. So sections of Hanover, St. James and Trelawney got in on some amount of overcast skies during the afternoon hours. If we actually take a look at the temperatures right now, we can see that we have 25 degrees Celsius in Kingston and 25 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay. And you can pause this video right now to see what the temperatures are like in your specific era, keeping in mind that these temperatures should be getting lower as the night progresses. If we actually take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, we can see that Jamaica is embedded in some amount of yellows for 18 Z on Tuesday, that's 1 p.m. on Tuesday, that represent up to 1 or 2 degrees Celsius above average temperatures and what are the average temperatures for the month of March up to 87 degrees Fahrenheit and if we actually take a look at the thermometer 87 degrees Fahrenheit is about the equivalent of let's say 30 to 32 degrees Celsius and if we're gonna be receiving above average temperatures, we should be receiving anywhere in the low 30s so about 30 to 33 degrees Celsius at most across the island if we actually take a look at the dry air map, on, at the key at the bottom, we can see that the dry air is less in the yellows and gets more intense in the reds and the whites. And we can see that the driest air is right there off the coast of West Africa. With all of those reds and whites. Jamaica right now is in some amount of yellows and oranges. So it is dry, but it is not that dry. If we actually take a look at the Saharan air layer forecast, this map is showing the Saharan dust and where it's located by all of those brown shadings by 2 p.m. on Tuesday we can see that we have some amount of Saharan dust across portions of the Eastern and Central Caribbean not at Jamaica as yet it should get there by about Wednesday so we know that we have to take our necessary precautions so that we're not that drastically affected if we actually take a look at the wave forecast for tomorrow by 12 p.m. on Tuesday both the Euro and the GFS models are showing that Jamaica is surrounded by a lot of blues. The blues on the key represent 1.5 meter wave height or less. And what is causing all of these low wave heights? The winds that we're going to be receiving. So we can see that we have a lot of greens that represent anywhere from 10 to 20 knot winds. So it's not that strong. And it is coming in more from the southeast on both the Euro and the GFS. And if we actually take a look at where the air piles up where do we have the least amount of wind in those blues so wherever that air piles up in the afternoon hours that is where we're gonna have that buildup of clouds and convection across the island and if these clouds tower all the way up into the upper levels of the atmosphere becoming thunder clouds cumulonimbus clouds more than likely they are going to be sheared off by that westerly wind shear that the euro and the gfs are forecasting so if there's some amount of afternoon convection these ra this rainfall associated with that afternoon convection might linger around even up to even the evening hours with all of that wind shear pushing it off towards the east so especially areas like maybe saint mary saint antrelawney saint james hanover might get in on some of that weather for tomorrow and if we actually take a look at the precipitation forecast for confirmation 
3 p.m. on the euro is showing some amount of blues across the island. The GFS is showing blues across the island as well, and the signal for the GFS is even stronger across portions of St. Mary and Portland and Northern St. Andrew right there. So we know that we have to take our necessary precautions, bring your umbrella, bring your weather gear so that you're not that drastically affected. Even up to 4 p.m., we still see a lot of blues on the Euro and the GFS even spilling into portions of St. Elizabeth right there. So we know that we might have some amount of rainfall across the island for t tomorrow. So ensure that you are prepared. The accumulated precipitation forecast is a bit, what's the word, different on both the Euro and the GFS. We can see that we have more rainfall across portions of northeastern Jamaica for tomorrow. Both the accumulated precipitation forecast maps are showing all the rainfall that's expected from now up until 3Z on Wednesday. When we calculate that, that's all the rainfall from now up until, let's say, 10 p.m. on Tuesday so we'll be getting some amount of rainfall tomorrow especially across northern Jamaica that's where the consensus is located and considering that we're in one of the driest months of the year if we actually take a look at the Jamaican average rainfall in millimeters from 1996 to 2015 March is one of the driest um, months of the year for the average rainfall across Jamaica so any rainfall that we receive this month is much welcome all right so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica let's focus our attention on the rest of the Caribbean and the areas around it so as stated we can see a lot of clouds associated with that cold front affecting portions of Florida so Jamaicans in Florida might be receiving some amount of overcast skies and rainfall from that you can see a lot of clouds as well across portions of Costa Rica as well as Colombia right there and if you actually take a look at the Doppler radar images you know Doppler radar images show the actual rainfall as opposed to satellite images that show the cloud cover so if you actually take a look at Doppler radar images from about 1 40 p.m. we can see that we don't have much in the way of rainfall across portions of northeastern Caribbean so those areas have been in the clear for today if you actually take a look at the Barbados radar, only a sprinkle of showers moving um, through the trade winds to the far northeast and southwest of the island. Nothing major at this time around Barbados. If you actually take a look at the wider view of Doppler radar images, we can see where we have that um, rainfall trail across portions of southern Florida. Right there, lots of rainfall to affect that era for tonight you can also see some amount of rainfall right there across portions of northern Venezuela as well as portions of Colombia right there and considering that the cold front that's in the Gulf of Mexico is gonna be affecting portions of uh, Mexico portions of Guatemala and Belize we can see that Doppler radar is showing some amount of rainfall across those spots right now and it should be spilling more to the east as time progresses Alright, so we can see that we have above normal temperatures to be receiving tomorrow across majority of the Caribbean. So anywhere from Central America all the way around to Cuba, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, all of the Eastern Caribbean islands are expected to receive some amount of above average temperatures for tomorrow. We can see some average or slightly below normal temperatures right there across portions of Trinidad and Tobago with a lot of below average um, temperatures right there across portions of Guyana, French Guyana and Suriname right there. And the Saharan dust forecast for tomorrow is showing that we're going to be having some amount of dust across the region, mainly across the eastern Caribbean. So the southern Leeward Islands, especially the Windward Islands, as well as the ABC Islands, maybe even portions of Venezuela, will be getting in on more of the hazy skies and the dust associated with the Sahara Desert for 2 p.m. on Tuesday. As it relates to the wave forecast, you can see the highest wave heights anywhere from 2 meter are more across portions of northern sections of Puerto Rico, maybe even sections of Anguilla, the US and British Virgin Islands right there, Barbuda, and Antigua might get in on some of that. And that is due in part by that wind that expected across the region. The wind forecast is showing that we're going to be receiving some amount of stronger winds. Let me get um, zoomed out. 
you can see that we're gonna be receiving some amount of strong wind across uh, that area or tomorrow which is why we will be receiving some amount of high wave height if we actually take a look at the wind forecast we see a lot of strong winds especially coming in from the west across those spots so that's why they are going to be in receipt of some amount of high wave heights right there across portions of northern caribbean and if we actually take a look at the precipitation forecast we can see that we have some amount of rainfall to be receiving across portions of puerto rico maybe even the british virgin islands you can see some amount of rainfall right there across portions of the u.s virgin islands as well as portions of northern cuba portions of nicaragua and costa rica to be receiving some more rainfall even up to two inches of rainfall across costa rica this map is showing up until 10 p.m on tuesday even portions of western venezuela and colombia to be receiving even up to an inch of rainfall from now up until then and we also have consensus on the gfs model and we know that when we have consensus like this the chances of it actually happening are much higher moving over to the western portion of the basin with the cold front across that spot across the gulf of mexico portions of mexico portions of belize portions of guatemala will be getting in on some amount of rainfall from now up until 10 p.m on tuesday even up to an inch of rainfall might be expected so try to take necessary precautions so that you're not affected by any of that rainfall or the flooding that comes with it all right so let us take a look at a tweet that was posted by philip klotzbach if you don't know by now he is a famous meteorologist at colorado state university who specializes in the atlantic hurricane season and the basin in general and he recently made a tweet so if you haven't been following him you need to fix that he stated latest noaa enzo forecast gives a 61 percent chance of el nino for the peak of the atlantic hurricane season august to october el nino typically reduces atlantic hurricane activity via increases in vertical wind shear too much shear tears apart hurricanes what does he mean by this so across the eastern pacific if we're having an el nino with the warmest waters right there across the eastern pacific and then there will be more upward motion more buildup of clouds and rainfall and maybe even storms across that region and that in turn brings about wind shear brought about by the outflow from all of that wet bad weather in the eastern pacific and it all of that wind shear trails all the way into the caribbean and maybe even into the main development region and that is what happens it tears all of those storms and maybe even tropical waves apart bring less rainfall to our area of the world and according to his uh, bar graph that he showed, there, the chances of El Nino are going up in what month? July, August, September, August, September, October, September, October, November. So the peak months of the hurricane season. So that's not what we want to see if we are rooting for rainfall. But if we are rooting for little to no storms, that is what we actually want to see. But the thing about the El Nino is they actually suppress rainfall as well. So we might not be receiving the average rainfall that we would be receiving. It would be more on the little to no rainfall side. Another post that he recently made at 10.30 a.m. today stated, Weekly Nino 3 anomaly up to 0.4 degrees Celsius. The warmest weekly anomaly for this region since week centered on April 2022. April 22, 2020. Transition away from La Nina conditions continues. NOAA officially declared La Nina over last week. So he's highlighting that the Nino 3 era is starting to warm up, and as well as the fact that the National Oceanic and Atmos Atmospheric Administration had stated that the El Nin the La Nina that was affecting the era for the past couple of years has finally come to an end so we know that we're in for a possible el nino let's hope that we get more of a neutral rather than an el nino that we can get some amount of rainfall for the caribbean all right so that's it for today thanks for watching